Hi, I'm Mark Smith with Macroscopic Solutions, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the 10x objective on the micro kit uh, when it's hooked up to the Macropod Pro 3D. In the recent previous video uh, that we just produced, uh, I showed you how to set up and configure the system before you go, go ahead and take some images, but now we're already set up and what we're going to do is position a sample and start capturing some photos using the 10x objective. So one thing I'd like to first say before doing anything, I know I mentioned this last week, but when you're using the 10X objectives, it's really, really important that you get the correct diffuser. In our case, uh, for 10 and 20X objectives, you want to use this diffuser, which has uh, basically an extended bellow, basically acts as like a little light shade. So it prevents too much light from entering the objective. So it eliminates um, then basically the ability for, for your photos to get washed out, so you wouldn't have that effect. At the same time, it has a really wide open aperture because the 10 and 20x objectives use a wide open aperture. So we're just gonna put this back on the objective. Uh, you'll just put it on there very snug. You can kind of twist it to get it back down. And now what we're gonna do is go on and go ahead and power on our Macropod system. So you wanna turn on the camera so that it is in its automatic mode. You wanna power on the stack shot in our case, we're going to be using the 3x as opposed to the, the one axis controller. And you're going to have it in the auto step mode. Um, you want to have it configured to the x axis if that's where your servo is plugged into, if it's in the x. Uh, and then we'll go through the, regular, the other parameters a little bit later. So what I'm going to do now too uh, is I'm going to open up EOS Utility since the camera is now turned on. Uh, which is going to allow us to tether uh, our camera to the computer. And we're going to click on remote shooting. And then I'm also going to create a folder. Um, typically, uh, I would create it in a folder which I just keep live on my desktop at all times. It's just called Active 2D. Uh, so any work that I'm doing that's 2D related, not 3D related, I'll keep this folder here. I'll go to Active and then uh, create a new folder. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be imaging the scales on a Weevil at 10, 20, and 50x magnification. So we're just going to write Weevil scales uh, for this test. We're not going to record the locality or when it was collected. Um, I think it's from the Philippines, but, but I'm not too sure. Um, either way, irrelevant. Um, but let's go ahead. We, we've got that folder created. Now we're going to go in and click on our folder icon here in EOS Utility and we're going to navigate to that folder so that all of our images are being directed there. So we'll go to the desktop, Active 2D, whoops, we'll go to Active 2D. Go to Active, and we will open the Weevil Scale folder that we just created. And then what we, I might also do is just create another folder that just says 10x magnification or 10x objective. And then what we're going to do is open up our quick preview just so it, that it's ready and open. And then I'm going to open up my live view shoot as well. So every, anytime you have your, your live view open, um, you want to go ahead and turn on your, your lamp so you can see what it is that you're doing on the screen. Now. There's a few different things that we can use for background. Uh, I think when I was setting up the system, I told you I had some black felt on the back. It doesn't really matter uh, because we're going to be so close to the subject that you're not going to be catching any of the background anyways. So first, let me just show you the specimen that I'm going to be shooting. It's really important to dust these guys off. I usually just have a little brush um, or, or just a little um, air canister that I just blow any dust off of. And what we're going to be doing is just imaging the abdomen of this weevil. And when we position this on the stage, um, in the previous video I also said that it's really important to, po to basically place it on the stage so that it's in a little doll of a clay focused on the nose. That's really important for the 20 and 50x objectives, but because it's a larger specimen, uh, it's okay to use the center notch that we filled with clay on the regular L bracket, which is what we're going to do. But again, it's really, really important to block out any direct light. So you noticed I took off this little sheet of black foam. I'm going to put that on the side for now, just so you can see what I'm doing. And then I will replace it. Now what I want to do when I place this sample on the stage is I want to get the abdomen as close to the front as I possibly can. 
uh, without it coming off the front. And for, for that, that is so whenever I turn these flash heads so that the light is facing the front of the diffuser on this objective, no light from the surface of this flash head is coming into direct contact with any area of that specimen. We want to make sure that it's completely canceled out. And there's a, there's a really good reason for that, which I can demonstrate here in a second. But for now, I'm just going to replace the little foam sheet. And then what I'm going to do is also show you just where I have this a little bit up close. So if you notice where my specimen is, I can put my finger on both of these foam pads and notice that it's a few millimeters further back from my finger. That's a really good thing. Realistically, and more importantly for the 20 and 50x objectives, you want to get that subject as close to your finger as possible. That way you're really minimizing the working distance, but you're maximizing the amount of light that you're, you're basically able to get on the front of this diffuser and reproject back onto your sample. But for now, this is a really good position. You want to make sure that it's towards the front and not coming into direct contact with these flash heads. Okay, now what I want to do is show you how important it is to get lighting really correct on this sample. So I'm going to start to position um, the weevil to an area that I really want to photograph. And I think for this, it's really a demonstration. Uh, there's really nothing scientific about this. So what I'm going to be doing is just kind of making this shot a little bit more aesthetic than anything else. Uh, so I'm just going to try to find some symmetry in the abdomen and try to line everything up so that we can get a really good image. But now what I want to do is turn to the controller here and I want to press up or back in order to bring those scales into focus. So now you can see that the scales are starting to come into view. But one of the things that I'd like to point out real quick is that if you look on the video, you can see how there's a lot of glare associated with these scales. So you can see all these little white speckles that are coming back. And that's because the scales on this particular weevil are really good at retro reflecting light. They're, they're basically directing light off from the direction at which it came. So what we want to be able to do is eliminate any of that direct light so that the light that's coming into contact with the sample is extremely soft. It's the same sort of thing we do with diamonds. So what we're going to be doing is uh, turning off the direct light source and again we use these foam pads in order to block it out. So what I'm going to do is just kind of move my finger or my hand in front of the light path so that the only light coming into contact with the weevil is coming off the diffuser and you can see right there is a contact point you see how all that glare completely disappears and I'm not even use, using a polarizer on this um, on this system there's no polarization filters that we ever use in any of our images on our Flickr gallery all we're doing is is basically taking advantage of, of a diffused or reflected light source so now I'm just going to remove my hand and again just show you what it is that we're looking at and now we're going to go ahead and set up the rest of our our image. So what I want to do now is I want to pull the abdomen as close to the lens as possible and it looks like if you see it, it there there is some symmetry there but it looks like the right side of the abdomen it's not necessarily straight you can see the the specimen as a whole is not very symmetrical so I'm just going to take a little bit of time and try to get this get this perfect real quick. Okay, that looks like it's centered pretty well. You can see the focal plane on both sides of the abdomen is coming down in approximately the same location. So now what I want to do is continue to configure the two locations at which I'm going to be stacking between. So I'm going to pull the abdomen closer to the to the objective as possible, as close to the objective as possible. So right about there. Also going to lower it a bit just to kind of get those other areas out of the picture. And there we go. So it's always safer to overshoot. So what I'm doing here is instead of kind of trying to find the very last area of this image that's in focus, I'm going to, I'm basically going to eliminate um, any focal planes or, or so essentially what I'm doing here is I'm pushing the entire sample out of focus. It's better to be safe than sorry, so you don't want to have some area of this photograph that is in focus before you set up your shot and risk uh, the servo not bringing the stage back far enough before you go and take some images. So that's going to be our starting parameter. Remember, to, again, always important to start from the back of the specimen. So I'm going to go ahead and set that. Press set to set. Now it says select the end position, so I'm going to hit the downward arrow because again, I'm going to be moving towards the front of the specimen. 
until everything in the image is out of focus. I don't want to just end there. There's there could be a, an area that I'm I'm missing just because of any play that is associated with the motor. So I'm going to overshoot it and I'm going to make that my endpoint. And I'm going to hit set. Now I don't know the exact distance between this area. And with a 10x objective, generally I usually capture around 100 images. Uh, I really just feel it out. But the abdomen of this weevil is quite large. So I think in this situation, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be capturing um, about 135 images through this subject. And again, that's just through kind of experience, my overall feeling. I might be incorrect, but if I am incorrect, I'll show you how to adjust for it later. So I'm going to enter 135 steps in the, in the stack shot controller. Then I'm going to turn out my direct light source because I've got everything that I need set up. And I'm going to turn the camera uh, mode from automatic into manual. And I'm going to turn the flash on. Now, we already went through what the telephoto lens settings should be um, in the last video, but in case you missed that video or are overlooking it, I'm just going to go through it again. Uh, you want to have the 70 to 200 millimeter um, zoom function at 200 millimeters. You want to have uh, the aperture wide open at f2.8 at all times. You want to set the, the focal distance to infinity. And then also you want to set the focal distance to 1.2 meters in the switch on the side. You want to turn off all image stabilizing motors uh, so that there's nothing moving inside the lens between shots. And um, there is one more function, which is the automatic focus and the manual focus, of course, because we're focus stacking, uh, that should be preset to manual focus. So I've got my diffuser, I've got my 10x objective, I've got my lens adapter. I don't have a polarizer in here, I already told you why, but if you would like one, you can insert it between the adapter and the lens, and I've got my lens fully configured for where it needs to be. So now I've got my camera set to manual, um, and I've already told you that the aperture needs to be f2.8. So you can see f2.8 is where I have it. Then I'm going to change the ISO. Uh, again, ISO doesn't need to be any higher than 250 in any circumstance. For this, we're going to try 100 first. Exposure will always be 1 over 200 or 1 over 180, depending on what your camera can tolerate. And then your flash uh, to start, a good place to start, is going to be right around uh, 1 over 32 or 1 over 16. So we'll try it 1 over 32 first and just see what our lighting is like. Again, remember to turn your desk lamp off. And now what we want to do is just fire a test shot to see how our lighting uh, comes out. So I've got a picture here. You can see that's that's pretty good. There's no glare, which is great, except it's, it's a little too dark uh, for my liking. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the flash and we're going to just increase it by two. So instead of 1 over 32, we're going to use 1 over 16. We're going to take another image. And that's a lot better. Um, it's not as bright, again, as I would like it. For this, you could just take the flash up another notch, but or you can just conserve battery power. If you just change the ISO from 100 to 200, it's not going to affect it things too much. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the ISO to 200. We're going to capture another picture. And that's that's really quite bright. No glare. I think that that's a pretty pretty good uh, lighting condition for, for this stack of imagery. So we're going to go back to our Active2D folder. We're going to find the Weevil scales. And we're going to delete those few test shots that we just had to get our lighting right. And from there, now what we're going to do is press start on the stack shot controller and it's going to move along and capture 135 images for us. So as this, as this uh, captures its photographs, I'm just going to say a few things and then I'll speed it up uh, for the sake of, of time on the video. Um, it's really important to look in the lower left and lower right hand corners to make sure that the focal plane is not moving too far. Uh, like I said, 100 is typically good. It might have been okay in this circumstance, but you can see that uh, subjects that are previously in focus from the shot being taken prior to the, to the most recent images, uh, there's a good amount of overlap. So it looks like our focal distance is pretty good. You never want to undershoot that or else you get some focal plane banding uh, mixed in. The other thing I want to say is that it's really, really, really important to clean uh, your camera equipment. If you don't clean it, you'll have black dots all over the image, and when you go to stack 135 images together, it's going to be replicated in a line 135 times, and you're going to get these black streaks across your images. 
So it's really important to clean the camera sensor. It's really important to clean the glass on the back of this lens. It's really important to clean the glass on the front of the lens and the glass on the objective. Now you can use really any medium that you want. You could pay somebody to do it. Uh, we do do it. You can send your camera gear to us and we're happy to clean it for you. Uh, but if you, if you are keen to do it yourself and would like to give it a shot, I'll show you what we do. Um, typically, we have these iLead gel wands. So we have these iLead gel wands that come in a box just like this. We have a few of them. And what they are um, is a little gel stick that comes well, it's exactly that. It's basically a little pad of gel that comes on a stick. <clears throat> it's protected. You can remove this. And then it comes with some sheets of sticky paper. Sticky paper you're going to use every time you clean it. Or you can just use tape if you run out. You don't need to buy more paper. But you'll open this up and all you're going to do all over the glass is just press down and pull back up. And pull, press down and pull back up. And if you have it uh, pressed down completely parallel to whatever your sensor or glass is, you'll actually hear it pop when you pull it back. And that's going to collect any dust. And then at the end, you're going to take the tip of the gel stick and you're just going to press it on the sticky paper and pull it off. And that's going to pull all the dust off the gel stick. So this is really, really effective at cleaning your gear. I think it's about $50 on Amazon. Uh, we don't sell them directly through our website. We thought about it. Um, maybe we will in the future. And I'll keep you posted if that happens. Otherwise, feel free to pick one of these up. It's really, really effective for anybody who is focus stacking their photographs. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is just let this speed up and then... Um, We'll revisit when the images are completely captured. Okay, so we've just about captured the entire depth of the specimen. Right now we're at image 108 of 135. Uh, so if I do see any images that are being captured and it's not capturing anything that's in focus, it's okay to go ahead and just stop uh, the stack shot from capturing images. You can see right there we're through the subject entirely. So I'll just press the lower left hand button to stop it. Um, and that aborts it and then while we process the photograph I'm just going to turn the flash off and I'm going to turn the camera back to automatic uh, just <clears throat> so that we can have it ready for the next time we want to take an image or if I see any uh, any errors associated with the, with the image <coughs> okay so now what we want to do is open up uh, Zarine Stacker which is the stacking program we use to stitch together the focal planes <clears throat> It's the same software that comes with all of our systems. Okay, so now what I want to do is just navigate to our finder and I want to uh, drag all of those photographs that we just captured into uh, Zarin Stacker. <coughs> the other thing I always do is I just kind of add a one on the back of the, the pre-made folder name. What that allows me to do is capture more images if I would like to while these are processing. So I'm going to click on this folder, drag it to uh, Zarin Stacker where the input files are. <clears throat> and in the software, it's a little bit different than stitching with the 1 to 5x MPE 65. Uh, the glass is basically um, in an opposing direction on the front of the objectives. They are concave as opposed to convex uh, like the MPE 65 millimeter is. So for that reason, you actually want to reverse the order of these images. You still always want to capture from back to front, but in Zarin Stacker, whenever you're capturing images or processing images that you use a 10x objective or greater, at least with the objectives we provide you through macroscopic solutions, uh, you want to go ahead and process the image from front to back. So I've just reversed the order by <coughs> going into file here. And now what I want to do is go to stack, <coughs> align and stack all. So I'm just going to speed up the video until this is completed. And then uh, we will we'll talk about this a little bit more. Okay, so all of the images are now stitched together. Uh, so what we can do is just take a look at how it came out. We'll go to 25% first. We'll go to 50% and now we'll go all the way up to 100%. And bear in mind, um, this is just using the methods that I just explained in the video. I have not pulled this into Photoshop. There's no areas of this photograph where there's obvious focus banding. Uh, everything is very clearly in focus uh, and it's also extremely sharp, very clear. So I would say that that's a very, a very good photograph and a very, very good subset of instructions to follow when using the 10X objective. Um, so now what we're going to do is just take this photograph, we're going to go to File, we're going to Save Output Image, 
and we're going to save it as a TIFF file at 16 bits, and then um, we're going to save it in the same folder uh, where we captured them. So it's going to prompt us here in a minute. We'll just write uh, Weevil Scales Tutorial 10x Objective. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to save it. <clears throat> and then we're gonna to go to file close. For taking more, more images, if you just go to file close, it'll keep screen stack or open for the next time you capture some more photographs. And since in a moment we're gonna switch off the 10x objective, we're gonna capture some more images using the 20x and the 50x objective, I'm gonna leave this open. So, that being said, uh, that's a pretty good, pretty good uh, foundation uh, for you using the 10x objective. Uh, if I missed anything, if you have any additional questions or anything you're having trouble with, just post it in the comments section below or contact me directly and I'll be very happy to help. Um, so once again, as always, thank you very much for choosing Macroscopic Solutions. Uh, I look forward to, to more tutorial videos and I will work on the 20x <coughs> tutorial uh, in, the, in the next video short. Um, again, thank you very much. Have a great day.